out of any of the hardware videos that I've done on this channel, this is by far the one that I am the most excited for. This in my hand is a sample device of the JingPad A1, the world's first consumer-ready Linux tablet device that is going to be coming to the market very soon. So in this video, what we're going to do is unbox this, go over all of the wonderful specifications this thing has, and then do a hands-on overview and review of the device. Now, just to add to everything, not only do we have the JingPad here, but we have the optional keyboard that you could go ahead and purchase with the device as well. Now, obviously, this is a sample device, so the packaging may change, but even just this alone, the box is looking sleek. This is the JingPad A1, and this is an 11-inch tablet. Now in here I have this little carrying case with the actual Jing pad inside. So we're gonna, ooh, it's light. Uh, I believe it's only 500 grams. So this is a very lightweight device. Like you can hold that for a good amount of hours if you need be. This device is gonna be featuring a 8,000 milliamp battery. So in this little sample box, we have this snazzy little uh, leather case here. And then this looks pretty nice. We have two slots here in the box where we're gonna have everything else that we're gonna be needing. In here, it looks like we have two different little manuals as well as a USB type C cable. And then this box, it looks like we have our little uh, charging brick AC adapter here. I do believe that this keyboard is going to be $150 as an option. And look at that, it is looking absolutely beautiful. This keyboard basically will turn the Jing pad into a laptop. And there is our keyboard and trackpad. We're going to be taking a closer look at everything I've showed you so far. But first, let's do my favorite part and open up the wrapping. There she is. That is the Jing Pad. All right, so what we're going to go ahead and do is set this up, fire it up, and let's talk about some of the specifications real quick. So the processor in this tablet is a Unisoc Tiger T7510. It's a 12 nanometer octo-core chipset with four Cortex-A75 cores clocked at 2.0 gigahertz and four Cortex-A55 cores clocked at 1.8 gigahertz. Like mentioned, it does have a 8,000 milliamp battery with a usage time predicted between eight and 10 hours. The JingPad A1 comes with eight gigabytes of LPDDR4 RAM and 256 gigabytes of UMCP storage. But if this is not enough for you, do not fret. You can insert a micro SD card up to 512 gigabytes for additional storage. On the bottom, we have two speakers, the USB type C connector, as well as a microphone. And then up top on the device, we have two vents for cooling, the little power button, which also acts as a fingerprint reader. And then taking a look at the other side of the device, we have our volume controls. Now taking a look where the micro SD card slot is, if we go ahead and pop that open, you can see that there's actually an option for a nano SIM tray. Now this option may depend on the version that you purchase, and I did try to test this out with my T-Mobile SIM card, but at the moment it was not working. Now with all the general specs aside, the one thing that you're going to notice when you first turn on this device is how absolutely beautiful the display is. It features an 11 inch AMOLED 2K display with an exact resolution of 2368 by 1728. Within the display, they managed to pack in 266 pixels per inch. The device gives us 350 nit high brightness making it so it's usable outside during daylight and just looking at the device we have 90 percent screen to device ratio now one thing that actually kind of surprised me about this thing was the camera quality specifically the main camera on the back here it is a 16 megapixel camera and i was able to test it out a little bit i took a picture of my dog outside and that picture turned out absolutely beautiful and then I tried a close-up shot inside of this little ladder thing I have, and again, it turned out great. Now, is this the absolute best camera in the world? No, but you can take pictures on the fly with your Linux tablet, and that alone is awesome. Uh, comparing it to something like the Pine Phone, it is leagues ahead of the game. Now, additionally, there is a eight megapixel front camera. All right, hello. This is a test of the front camera, the 8 megapixel front camera right there. 
as well as the microphone. I'm about a foot and a half away from the screen, so it's looking pretty good. All right, so now what we're gonna do is actually run through the system here, some of the settings, some of the pre-installed applications and things like that. As I've stated, this is a preview version. This is a beta version. It's run, currently running 0 0.9. So they still have a couple months to work out some bugs and some minor things here and there. But right now this is actually a fairly usable, actually very usable Linux operating system. Here I'm in my settings application. You see I have typical things you'd expect, uh, WLAN for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Cellular, VPN. Under password and privacy, if I go over to password, you can set up your passwords here. Location services, display and brightness. So here you can see we have both a light and dark mode option as well as our screen brightness here. So we could go ahead and crank that up if you'd like to. Additionally, no matter where you are in this system, if you go up here to the top and you swipe down, you have access to your Wi-Fi settings, Bluetooth, you can toggle off and on airplane mode, sell your data, and the uh, night color display mode, and you also have voice, your brightness to control here as well, and audio controls. You also have more shortcuts here, such as enabling and disabling the rotation, as well as settings, volume, and a couple other things. Here, you have options for sleep, fonts. Under wallpaper, you can change the system wallpapers you might have seen. This is the one that shipped with the device. It's a sample device, currently in alpha, and it is the GenePad A1 DVT version. So I'm gonna hit cancel, and then there is a lot of different wallpapers that we could go ahead and pick from, and they're all beautiful. And you can even see on this system how responsive and just smooth it is with my touch gestures. Additionally, we have sounds, so you can change your voice, ringtone, go into silent mode. Under system and update, we go to about, which is where we started. You can go to system update and this will check for updates and I should be running the latest version as of right now, which you can see I am. So I'm gonna go ahead back out of there. You have legal information and you can perform a factory reset here. You have a lot more settings such as language and region, time and date. You have your uh, battery screen here so you can see how long you need to charge it to get it to be fully charged. You have our storage so you can see I'm using 10 gigs of the 244 that I have available to me. Then we have keyboard, virtual keyboard always on, which I will show you in just a sec. We have trackpad. So you have some typical settings there that you'd expect. Additionally, we have mouse, so you can set that up. And then pointer control. So this right here is your default applications. I have not added anything to the device other than NeoFetch, which you saw a little bit earlier. So we're gonna quickly run through what's going on here. First, we have voice memos. Now I'm not gonna jump into every single application. We're gonna save that for another video where I'll do a more in-depth deep dive of absolutely everything on this system. Now, if you're in an application, all you need to do to get out of it is simply swipe up and you can see it goes into the multitask view. If I swipe up a little quicker, it'll just take me right to the home page, and I can always slowly swipe up, which will take me to all the different applications I have open. And from there, if I would like to, I can then get rid of those by swiping those up. So overall, the multitask support and how it works on this system is one, kind of what we're used to in a mobile ecosystem, but it works really well, especially if you compare it to other mobile Linux ecosystems. So you also see we have Chromium up here, all the applications have a really nice splash screen, but you saw how quick that was to open up. This is your typical Chromium. We could go over to Twitter, which is really the only website that I've used on this thing. I actually tweeted out a picture from the Jing pad a little bit earlier. So if I go over to my profile and you can see how quick all the web pages load and just how snappy everything is, you could use this on a day-to-day -day basis. That's the picture I showed you guys earlier. I took on the Jing pad of my uh, puppy Dixie right there, but just because this has chromium out of the gate does not mean it's what you need to use You can install really whatever you want on this that works with arm We have the camera which we've already kind of checked out. We have a calendar Additionally, we have a media player and this one's pretty nice You can see the only media that I have are the two things I recorded earlier This one is of my uh, the video of my dog Dixie that I went ahead and recorded just to kind of see the quality of the camera and all that uh, we'll go ahead and back out of there or go ahead and swipe up and swipe that out to get rid of it. Additionally, going with media, we have photos. So if we go in there, we can actually go and check out some of those photos. So this is that one that I took a little bit ago. And I could go ahead and get rid of that. We have a calculator. It's a calculator. We have files. 
And this is cool, it lets you go ahead and explore the entire Linux file system within your Jingpad. This is a little notification I'm getting because like I said, I'm trying to get my uh, SIM card to work. But if you want to go ahead and see your notifications, you just swipe down on this side. You can see I'm getting a lot of the same thing because I was trying to get, or currently I'm trying to get something to work. But you can swipe all your notifications away that way or go ahead and click that button and clear everything. And I will note little issues like that are probably gonna be cleared up when this thing is released, so you won't really have to worry about that. But as I was saying, you have your entire Linux file system here. I have some things in Chinese characters. This is a Chinese device, Chinese operating system. So I'm hoping they kind of work on things like this for the uh, US market or really any market that's not uh, Chinese. But we have quick access to our documents, our pictures, our videos everything that you'd expect. If we go over to user right here, you can see that this is our entire home directory. If I go over to on my pad right here, this is where we can see our root directory. So we have our Mao, our media, our lib, our home, our etc. Basically anything you'd want to go into and access within your Linux file system. So let's go ahead and close that out. We have a clock here. I'm not gonna get too into the clock. It's fairly basic. You can set alarms, stopwatches, anything you'd expect in your standard mobile clock application. But down here, we have some of the best things. We have a terminal, we have the Jing store, and we have our settings. So first, let's go into the Jing store. So here are some of the featured applications. You have the Firefox web browser, Krita, Thunderbird, a lot of really popular Linux applications. Uh, if we go under finance, for example, there's no apps present, no apps. Uh, under developer tools, you have a couple different things. They don't really seem to have too much in their store as of yet. I may need to update the uh, repositories to go ahead and get some of these, just some of the things that were in featured. Like I said, this is a alpha preview version, but let's go ahead up into our featured applications and let's grab Krita. Krita is a pretty heavy duty application and I've tried to run Krita on my uh, Pine phone, for example, and it did not work the best. So we're gonna type in our password here, hit okay and you can see Krita over there download and installing. All right, so Krita just finished up here, so let's go ahead and open it. There we go, and we can start a new file here. Um, all that's fine for now. All the buttons are incredibly small. You definitely want to hook up a mouse to this or use the trackpad, but you do have all your options here available to you. You could do ev everything you'd need to do, and it's pretty intuitive. This is definitely a wonderful system. So let's go ahead and swipe up, and you can see everything that I had open. You just go ahead and hit the trash cans, and that will close out all your open applications. And now, last but not least, we have the full Linux terminal. If I go up here to help and I go to about, we can see that we are currently running console. Console is the default terminal on here. And being that they use the apt package manager, you could go ahead and get just about anything. You can see earlier I used apt, a uh, sudo apt install neofetch in order to get the neofetch application but you can use that to get just about anything. So for example, let's do sudo apt install and an application instead of Krita that I would personally use is GIMP. So we'll just type that in. It's gonna ask us for our password, hit enter, and you can see it's gonna pull all the packages. I'm gonna hit enter to hit the Y and it's gonna go ahead and install GIMP. All right, so that looked like it was a success to me. You can now see we have the GNU image manipulation program. Let's go ahead and open that up. And most of the applications, or so far all the applications I've seen have this splash screen, so that's super cool. And here it is, this is GIMP, a full-fledged desktop operating system running on this little super lightweight tablet. So one thing I really wanna talk about a little bit more is this keyboard. This is an absolute must buy if you're gonna be getting this Jing pad. With this keyboard, there's no latches or anything. It's all magnet, so I could just pull off the Jing pad just like that. Now you can see these little pins right here. This is how the keyboard goes ahead and connects to it. And all you do is set it on there and it magnetizes and automatically connects. And it's pretty strong magnets too. I'm gonna to hold it by just the keyboard and you can see it's not going anywhere. Additionally, you have this little back thing right here which supports it, so 
it doesn't really wiggle around too much when you're actually using it. Now as far as the specific specifications for this keyboard, it's 11 inch with 8 rows magnetical keyboard, up to a 135 degree viewing angle. It's powered via pogo pins and the trackpad is actually a pretty good size. It's 98 millimeters by 45 millimeters. It's a little on the short side but it's on the long side so that kind of makes up for that and there are multi-touch gestures. Not as of yet, they're still working on developing the actual trackpad aspect, but that is, well, should be ready upon launch. Additionally, there's the JingPad pencil. Now, unfortunately, we do not have the JingPad quite yet, but this thing is going to be awesome. It has 4,096 pressure levels. This thing is gonna get 360 hours of battery life on a single charge and it could charge from zero to 100 in about two hours. Now the cool thing about the pencil is it's included in the basic package. So the keyboard is separate. You have to buy this for $150 as of recording this video and the Jing pad will just come, well, the Jing pencil will come with the Jing pad. Now, out of all these Linux devices that have been coming out as of recent, I truly believe that this JingPad is going to be one of the main things to really push the ARM Linux ecosystem forward. Because of those higher specs, the beautiful display and all that, from just a consumer level, people are going to love this. And personally for myself, at the moment, it is by far one of my favorite things. Anybody out there that wants to put any effort into the ARM ecosystem, at this point, I think needs to own a JingPad. Speaking of owning a JingPad, you could actually go ahead and kind of pre-order it through their Indiegogo campaign. And also on this campaign link, you'll have any other information that I did not mention in this video, such as more in-depth specifications, as well as their risks and challenges section. Now this is pretty nice because they're fairly transparent in the fact that they're a new company. This JingPad A1 is first generation hardware, and they admit things like the ARM ecosystem is not yet as uh, developed and advanced as the x86 architecture, but this thing is definitely gonna be going places. With that said, I will be having more videos come out in regards to the JingPad, so make sure you are subscribed so you do not miss any of those videos. I'll be testing out more software, games, going more in depth into the actual operating system, tinkering with it, Things like that, this is gonna be a lot of fun. <laughs> With all of that said, please subscribe and ring that bell so you do not miss any future uploads, any future content, any of the good stuff. Make sure you're subscribed, like this video if you didn't, please let me know down below what you think of the JingPad as it currently is, and do you intend on buying one, either pre-order or in the future? Uh, with all that said, I hope you all have a beautiful day, and goodbye.